What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back with another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. So I've spent a lot of time over the last week or a few days really trying to figure out And asking myself, why do I feel so, like, why do I feel so, like, such an advocate or, like, I have to be an advocate for Jada Pinkett Smith? Like, real, I, when I tell y'all for the last however many years she, she has been getting backlash, I have felt like I put myself in a willfully, because I, I I don't feel I feel good about taking this stance, willfully putting myself in a position to advocate for her and defend her and protect her reputation, what she says, interview anything. If somebody got something to say about Jada Pinkett Smith and is negative, I will be the first one to jump out and defend her. And I I've been really trying to ask myself or figure out why because over the past week as you all have ain't no way you could hide this you literally don't can't have if you don't have no phone or no internet that's the only way you can be able to duck and dodge this Jada Pinkett Smith has a book coming out which we talked about briefly worthy it's gonna be hitting the shelves I believe at the end of this week she's been on a book tour granted she has not even given probably more than two or three interviews But the blog sites, pop culture sites, black, any, any site that talks about pop culture and trending topic news has taken multiple sound bites from only those two interviews. It seems like they got early copies of the book and has been constantly dropping excerpts for the book from the book with no context. That makes it seem like, or is making it seem like Jada Pinkett Smith is constantly talking about all of these things and all of these aspects of her life in a part of the book and i.e. mainly Will Smith because they are only talking about the things that are salacious that can get some traction about Will Smith or Tupac. So I have been on this brigade, this train of just going off and checking people and just standing trying to stand up for Jada Pinkett Smith and I realized it's because I really feel like I relate to her so much take everything you think you've heard over the past couple of years around Jada Pinkett Smith as relates to Tupac that entanglement Will Smith Jada Pinkett Smith, she's from Baltimore. We all know this unless you just have not been listening. And I'm learning people don't listen or and they don't read. Okay, that, y'all don't, oof. She grew up in Baltimore. I grew up in Flint. While we didn't have similar upbringings in regards to um, addicted uh, or parents that have were struggling with addiction, I too did feel like there was a lack of nurture and care in my life that mirrors or relates to some of the ways that she speaks about her childhood. Growing up in a city like Flint and Baltimore in general, it's just a very interesting experience. Even if you ain't doing the hoodest stuff, even if you are, that experience alone is very different from other people's experience who may have grown up in like the suburbs or in predominantly white areas. It's just different. And unless you are from somewhere like that, you you probably don't understand the context of which I'm 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 mentioning mentioning this in. Her level of ambition. Now, why I didn't come to Hollywood and get to the pinnacle or the top as Jada Pinkett Smith did, I know what it feels like to come from a place like where she came from and to have a dream or or goals. And to feel unstoppable in those. I understand that. It is very hard doing what you said you was going to do. And I relate to her to, in, in, in ways. Cause I can see her journey and what it took to embark on that. Also her journey of, of rediscovery within herself. Whether it's spiritually, 
um, personally within relationships, how she views the structure of marriage and just how she talks about where her and Will Smith are now versus where they were and how they came all the way to this point. I really relate to those conversations. Again, take everything that you thought you heard out of what I'm saying and even with the entanglements because I'm not going to be, August Alcina got on and did that interview with Angela Yee with the I should have cheated Keisha Cole here. Now I ain't going to get myself in a situation where I'm going to be dating somebody with the, with the Keisha Cole I should have cheated here. Okay. But her journey of her life's journey, I just really understand. I really understand it. So with that, this past week, there has been the craziest amount of backlash against her for, again, only having done like two, three interviews. People know what's clicking. There are sites, pop culture sites that have been killing. And I'm talking about eating with the, with doing numbers because all they have been doing is talking about Jada Pinkett Smith. So we're going to cover a few things in regards to this whole over of uh, this whole scenario. And let me start by also saying this. A lot of people, we don't care. Take us out of the group chat. I don't want to hear anything about it. Why doesn't she just quit talking? Hasn't she done enough? You do care. Or even if you don't personally care, numbers do not lie. And them numbers on these posts, on all of these sites, doing millions of views. It's getting millions of clicks. So somebody care. Somebody want to hear about it. And if it ain't you, who is it? Is it your, 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 your auntie want to know? Okay. Your, your cousin want to know? Everybody want to know? You don't want to know? Okay. So a couple things. One, first, watch the interview that she recently did with Jay Shetty. It's on YouTube and it is in an uh, audio version. It's a, it's a podcast. He has a podcast. Y'all know Jay Shetty. He is um, a mental wellness life coach, specialist, guru, whatever you want to call him. But him and Jada Pinkett Smith have a re- working relationship. They have been collaborator collaborators for many years. So with that in mind, that type of person interviewing you, there's going to be an extra level of care and transparency that you will get in that space versus somebody else. So if you are interested in actually hearing in full context, not sound bites, Jada Pinkett Smith perspective on her relationship, the so-called entanglement, her and Will's, um, how they're handling, how they've handled their partnership over the years, the slap, her kids, all of that. Watch the interview with Jay Shetty. It's really good. Second, I do and honestly believe all of this has coming from or is stemming from surrounding the fact that we, and I'm doing air quotes, we, because I don't want to be looped in with this group. <laughs> and and I, 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 I just don't. While I respect that man and I, I love, I, I F's with me some Will Smith. I also recognize that we as a community and a collective have romanticized him. And because we have romanticized him, anything that happens around or indirectly to him, even if it is actually to him, even if it is adjacent to Will Smith and it, and if, if it competes with the romanticized version of him that we have in our heads, we immediately or people immediately react in a dramatic and drastic way because that can't happen. That can't be true. Oh no, not Will Smith. No, no, not Mr. Independence Day. And the fact that we have done that, we are no longer opening ourselves up to realistically seeing who someone in this case, Will Smith actually is. We can no longer receive that. Because who he really is and who they really are as a couple does not align with the picture we have allowed ourselves to paint that has lasted 20 something years. It's the same way when parents be lying to kids, it's hard for the kids to to finally hear the truth because that means they will have to then question everything that they have been raised and brought up on over in the past. It's very difficult for people to do. And in this case, 
the romanticism of Will Smith has a major effect on all of this. Another thing, people have been doing personal posts on TikTok and Instagram trying to debunk all of the things that Jada Pinkett Smith is saying, in particular, Tupac. Now, let me just first say this. If I had a friend, and I said this before and I'm going to keep saying this. If I had a friend who was the most famous rapper who ever lived and he passed away, I would do everything in my power to keep his memory live and keep him a part of the conversation and to let people never forget him and who he was as a human being and as a friend and man. If I got, I have friends now who are so important to me that if something ever happened to them, I would be ashamed of myself if I did not continue the conversation about their lives and their legacy. If you have a friend who is impactful in any way, even if it's just in your life and because they die, you feel like, well, I won't ever talk about them again. Shame on you. Shame on you. So in this case, I love the Tupac stories. Tell me all about it. Okay. I want to know more. In this particular instance, there's a lady on TikTok who went viral for saying Tupac couldn't have asked Jada Pinkett to get married to him because he was already married. Back, back story. Somebody took up, there's an interview that Jada Pinkett Smith did again. One of like the only three, they took a quick sound bite that talked about how Jada said Tupac proposed to her when she was, when he was in, in Rikers, I believe it was, um, all the smoke with Matt Barnes and, and stack. She said, he just feel like he seemed like he just needed somebody to do the time with him. And she said he wasn't serious because I, even if I would have, if we would have got married, they weren't in relationship and weren't romantically involved. They just had strong friendship connection. Even if they were married, she said he would have divorced her anyway. Cause it, that's just, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have fit. Some lady on TikTok saying that's not true because he was already married at the time to a woman named Keisha that Jada must be Jada got to be lying because Tupac was only at Rikers for one month. So she couldn't have visited him. That same timeline was when Will told Jada to come back to LA because she moved away and moved back to Maryland and was giving up on the industry and bought a farm that couldn't have happened because Will Smith told her to come back to LA. Jada lying. Jada lying, blah, 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 blah. Let me start by saying this. Y'all know how many men in relationships be asking other women to be with them and be in a relationship again and get married. I personally can name at least three men who have been in a relationship and have said to me, you know, I want to be with you. Why don't you forget all that? I can, let's, let's do it right now. You know how many men in relationships, men in prison who got multiple girls and wives? Even... Y'all know how many, I'm sorry. Do we not know this? One, two, just because a man is interested in you and tells you to fly back to LA and be with him does not mean that you can't then still go visit your friend in Rikers, even though he was there in a month. Y'all do know that she did not walk from LA to Rikers Island, right? A flight is you can take a day trip, fly to New York, Get the take, get the drive, drive up to Rikers and then take your ass back to JFK International and fly back to the West Coast. I'm sorry. It just seems very clear to me. But again, people in the people in the comments like, yop, yop, you write that time. Like, yop, 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 whatever. Another point about Tupac. And again, now we get into this stuff that just annoyed me and, and people not really using their critical thinking skills. Jada Pinkett Smith, if somebody got another soundbite where she talked about how Tupac had alopecia. Now people mad saying why she disclosed his medical diagnosis. We didn't need to know all that. Don't nobody want to know this. She just now talking. Let that man rest. She embarrassing Tupac. Why she talking? Didn't nobody ask her. Why she telling his business? Y'all know his auntie spent a decent amount of time on the docuseries Dear Mama that we talked about here on Black News. She spent a decent amount of time talking about why Tupac had a shaved head because when he was beat up by the police, he had to remember that brutal beat, that brutal beating that he endured by police because a lot of that was hits to the head. 
His hair never grew back fully from that. It was spotty and patchy. The beating caused him to have a form of alopecia. His auntie talked about this. There was another interview, I believe, from his uncle or a close male friend found on the internet. He talked about this. People have been talking about this. So now, why you mad when Jada Pinkett Smith talked about it, but you wasn't mad when his auntie Nim was talking about it? They 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 brought it up. Why she she can't bring it up too? Why you? I'm uh, I'm confused. Next, people are mad saying, why she telling all the family's business? Why she saying all this? We don't want to know. She telling everything about the family. We just need to keep it a secret. What's the problem? Will Smith went on an entire press tour and talked for months about his family and everything that was going on with them. And nobody said a damn thing. Y'all let Will Smith talk for months on that dang book tour. He did a docu-series on YouTube following following him while he was in the writing process. He showed parts where he had his family and friends read excerpts from the book beforehand before it hit the public. Will Smith talked about all of this in his book. That Jada Pinkett Smith is revealing minus the Tupac stuff. So why y'all mad when Jada Pinkett Smith is now telling some of the same info? It's not new. This is not new information. You know, and I hate to say this. I hate to say this, but I really have been realizing over the past couple of months, people really don't be reading. Like if it's not in a short social media hit, people really don't read. And you know what they say about black people, about us. And I hate this saying, but with the rise of social media and clickbait and and, 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 and false news, you know what they say? If you want black people to not know something, put it in a book. Another thing that I want people to hear and or reading the book because I told you, I'm gonna get that dang book. I'm gonna get the, I'm getting every version. Okay, hardback, audio, and the paperback. I can't wait to read it. I cannot wait to read this book. But one thing she confirmed in that, especially in that Jay Shetty interview, and other places, but this is more relevant and it's a better conversation, in my opinion. She confirmed that her and Will Smith were in fact separated in living lives as single people since 2016. Not on some old, we got an open marriage. No, they were separated. He was living as a single man and doing single man things. She was living as a single woman and doing single woman things. Hence the August Alcina situation. Jada was out here living like a single woman. Will Smith, there was rumors about thing people he was dating. They were not together, which she also ties into and talks about one of the reasons why she was shocked at the Oscars was that he mentioned, don't keep my, keep my wife's name out your mouth. She, her thing was she was shocked because they haven't referred to each other as husband and wife at that point since 2016. So hearing that was like, huh? What? Oh, shoot. Oh. She then goes to talk about how she then realized, oh, should we in this together now? Okay, we are partnership in this whole ordeal and event. But she also did mention she was shocked or even just happy and grateful that he invited her to the Oscars. Because at the time, and sorry, there's a dog, the dog, on, the dog is barking again. There was a time where they weren't even at the time, is she the way it sound the way she said it was? They weren't even like that for her to expect that she was gonna get an invite to the Oscars. It was like, oh shoot, you want me to be a part of this with you? Okay, great. She attended as a family member, support, not as a wife. But again, because they chose to not tell people that they were separated. That's what it looked like to the public that they were husband and wife. But she also goes into that where she says she wanted to tell everybody that they were separated on that red table, that red table talk 
um, entanglement episode, but Will Smith did not want to announce, make that announcement. Which leads me into my next point. After this, I'm really hesitant for women with their own large goals and large um, amounts of ambition. I'm hesitant for them to partner with men who are larger than life. I am really hesitant for that to happen because what we've noticed, not in just this situation, in other situations, as a woman with her own goals and ambitions, who partners with the man who is larger than life, a lot of times in a lot of cases, your ambition takes a back seat, even if you don't want that to happen yourself. If something goes wrong in the relationship, you will be the blame. People will take any opportunity to make it the woman's fault or to villainize the woman, even if it had nothing to do with her or if the man should be as equally responsible. And overall legacy, it you it just seems like in those larger than life relationships, you're going to suffer as the woman, even if it's not suffer bad, even if it is bad. After this and seeing how anything that can happen in that family automatically is deemed her fault with us forgetting that Jada Pinkett used to be that chick. Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett used to be that girl. And for her, because of situations that have been surrounding Will Smith to have dimmed her own accomplishments and her own legacy. I don't like that for her and for any other woman that has been put into that situation or has found herself in that situation. I don't like it. She also mentioned that at the, on the Jay Shetty podcast, it was at the hour, the hour 34 minute mark where she kind of talked about, she had to process that situation in all situations. as to the fact that why do women get so much heat more than men in the same situation? Listen to the podcast. But with that said, I can go on and on and on and on about this. Cause y'all know I am passionate about this particular topic. Um, but I would love to hear y'all's thoughts. I want y'all to, if you're going to chime in, listen to the interviews or read the read things. Don't just take the sound bites because having watched the full interviews and listened to the sound bites, them sound bites doing them dirty. It ain't giving you the full context. So let's do our due diligence and then hit me up if y'all want to have a chit chat about it. Y'all know where to find me. I'm at Canelia on social media. Child, they done convicted Carly Russell, y'all. We, now we knew Carly was going to get in trouble, but they, Hey, they didn't, they gave that, they gave, they, they, they had that girl some jail time. Okay. They get, she got the jail time. So backing up Carly Russell in Alabama, y'all know the young girl, black woman who said she was kidnapped the baby. She was chasing the baby who was walking on the freeway, disappeared for a weekend, came back. Turns out she was over at the day's end or some equivalent eating snacks with no wig on, holding herself a hostage. She lied. Y'all know the South gone South and they not playing that with no black woman. If she weren't black, hey, it could have, mm. but Carly Russell, they charged her. She has been convicted, found guilty of two misdemeanor charges related to the case, and has been sentenced to one year in jail and has about um, $18,000 to pay in restitution. Now, one year jail time for this, I told y'all before, I'm on the fence about punishment. I don't feel strongly either way. I knew she was gonna get punished because it's the South, like I said, but if she did not get punished, I would have been fine with it. But Carly Russell, she AK. Carly Russell went to, she went to college. Carly Russell seems like a nice girl, wholesome, okay? She don't seem like she built for jail. Just looking at the pictures in the video, I don't know if she going to fare well behind bars. I'm just, I'm not banking on her to go full on first 48 on them, okay? 
it might turn out to be like an episode of Scared Straight. Y'all know when the dude pulled up the little boys and he was, you ain't cute, you dusty. Like it's going to be one of them. Okay. But they, she, hey, she, if she don't, if she appeals and loses the appeal, sis going to the slammer. It's slammer time. I feel so bad for her. I feel bad. Cause let me tell you something, whatever you going through, whether you're having mental health struggles, you are crying out for attention. Maybe someone is not, um, stepping up in ways for you that you would hope. It ain't never that serious to fake your own kidnapping child. It ain't never that serious. Now, if she had was really facing some mental health challenges, I really do hope that she gets some help in the care that she needs. Because I hate to see I hate to see somebody down bad. I don't like it. But this is a lesson to anybody. Be careful for before you be out here lying. Because they hey, they ain't gonna lock you up. They ain't playing. And side note, her boyfriend, remember the boyfriend she had? Why he out here hosting parties off the strength and the reputation of being Carly Russell's boyfriend? Y'all, we got to find a better way as a people. I just, mm. but are y'all shocked about Carly Russell? Are y'all shocked about the sentence? I'm low key kind of shocked that it's been a year, that it's a, a year. I thought she was going to get maybe 30, 30, 90 day, but like maybe, maybe 90 day, some community service. They gave that girl a year in the pen. She going to the clink, okay? Woo. I, terrible. I hate that for her. But let me know, are y'all shocked? Did y'all expect this? Did y'all think she should have got longer or shorter? Hit me up. Let me know your thoughts. You can find me on social media at Cornelia. On this week's episode of Black News, we talked about my strong defense of Jada Pinkett Smith, her upcoming book and the most recent batch of interviews that she's done in regards to her uh, book and promo tour. We also quickly discussed Carly Russell and the fact that she was sentenced to one year in jail. Hit me up and let me know what you thought about these topics. Um, some or none. And I'll check back with you guys next time. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again for supporting the podcast by sharing, liking, subscribing, and rating five stars on your favorite podcast app. To find more information about me, you can check me out at at Cornelia on social media, as well as on my website, which is Cornelia.com. And as always, thanks for supporting, and I'll be back next week with new topics and a new episode.